was what pushed me over the edge of this lifelong pattern of just complying, complying, being yep. what people wanted and just putting myself like last and never really asking like, is this actually good for me? Mm -hmm. And so I just went off on this journey and for this, I remember this summer, it was so pivotal for me. I just started searching, who am I? Hey everyone, my name is Kira Miller and I am the host of the What's Your Life Journey podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in again with us and this time with our guest, Catherine Cimarelli hey. from the band Cimarelli. Um, they're big on YouTube and also big social media influencer group, I'd say. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. We're excited to hear your story today. So Catherine, who would you say Catherine Cimarelli was in really the be the beginning of this journey of not not being able to rest and striving to feel good enough for your worth. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, do you mean like in childhood, like the yeah. really beginning? Like what, from the first stage that you can remember, who yeah. do you feel like you were at that time? I feel like, okay, I feel like the best way to sum it up for people to understand would just be the phrase people pleaser, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, It's just like this sort of way of living your life where you put yourself last, you kind of like, you're always putting the needs of others before yourself, which like is a good thing in, in theory, yeah. but it can go way too far to the point where you are like neglecting yourself and running yourself into the ground. And I feel like since childhood, I've just very, very naturally been that like people pleasing type of mm. person that always wanted to um to just to be loved and to yeah. be to be good enough and to impress people by like how good I was and how much I could offer them and how much I could help and yeah. how supportive I was you know just everything so it's like it starts to become about other people so I would say like really just from childhood I can't even maybe when I was really young actually yeah that's true when I was really young like probably I don't know up until the age of seven or eight, I was really, I was the opposite. I was like very angry and moody and huh. rebellious. So through a lot Is of tantrums. Because you were a people pleaser before that or no? No, that was gotcha. before. Separate. So I was just a very like, I feel like I was very angry and I tried to run away a lot. I would lock myself in my room. So like, yeah. I think that was sort of me like being expressive, being like more honest. Right. And then at some point a, a switch just flipped and then I became very like compliant and just like, okay, okay whatever people need me to be, like yeah. I'm going to be that person. And I just remember kind of shutting down all my emotions pretty young so that I could just just fit whatever mold mm -hmm. people needed me to fit. So Interesting. So do you feel like your intentions behind it were not necessarily like pure hearted? Or do you think, not that they For were being bad. being a people pleaser? Yeah, but do you feel uh, like it was more maybe self-gratifying than what um, you thought? I think it was more just this desperate desire of wanting to be seen by people and wanting to be loved. Mm. And it was just constantly like on this treadmill of like um, love just felt very conditional. And I was like, if I don't constantly earn it, yeah. then it's not going to be there. Mm. So I just worked really hard to try to like earn it from people. Yeah. How did you see this like playing out in friendships, any sort of relationships, really like family friendships? Yeah. So and how did it define you, I guess, in the different mm -hmm. roles of your life? So for family, I would say, um, I just, I don't know how this really even happened. I don't know if it's just naturally in me mm -hmm. or if I just took on this role, but I grew up in a really big family. Yep. So there's 11 kids and I was the third oldest. Um, and my two older siblings had very, have very strong personalities, yep. whereas I'm a little more laid back, a little Soft. more chill. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little softer, <laughs> definitely. Um, and so I think it just sort of naturally happened that, I became very much like this caretaking type of person mm. where I would just um, I would just be like the the caretaker. Yep. And my mom really took to that. Like she really appreciated that. And mm -hmm. she kind of um, called me like her sunshine. Yep. And like so I think I don't think that was like her intention. But I think right. I, for me as a kid, I took that to mean like I needed to be happy and I needed to be you know, pleasant and need to like yep. bring joy to people all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. And I think I just took that way too far so that to the point where like. I don't know, I would just always be running around trying to help the family, like helping with the siblings or cleaning the kitchen yep. or whatever it was to sort of like, you know, take the stress off my parents or take, you know, the tension if there was a problem or anything. So I just always would take that onto myself. And I think, um, and I developed a lot of anxiety. I started having panic attacks mm. um, when I was like six or seven. Whoa. And I would just Early. always be kind of in this state of 
trying to, I think I tried to control um, if there was any problem in my family or anything by trying to be like the glue. Mm-hmm. And then in friendships, um, I always had friends like from, from when I was young, I've always been really outgoing, yep. really friendly and just like sort of the, I wasn't like the, you know, the perfectionist who excelled at anything. Right. I was kind of failing, like good at everything. Though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Especially yeah. compared to my older sister, Christina, right. she was like, you know, cause I feel like anyone who has older siblings watching this, like you always compare yourself yep. yeah, mm-hmm. to your older sibling. It. Yep. Yeah. It's like, you're always like looking at them and like my older sister was this high achieving, mm-hmm. very perfectionistic person. Yep. And I would just try all these things, you know, gymnastics, swimming, whatever it was. And I feel like I would just fail at them. Mm -hmm. Whereas like she would always be excelling. So it was like, I just sort of was like, okay, well, I can't really like do all these things on her level, but I'm really good at people. And like, I just kind of naturally knew like, I'm really friendly. People like me, like I can make friends. And that was sort of like my strength. So I always had friends and that was never, I never really struggled to make friends. But um, in middle school, actually, I ended up in this friend group of um, five girls and there was sort of like a leader and then other ones. And like, I mean, I think that's honestly very typical of that middle school, early Absolutely. high school age, but um, it was just a very um, toxic kind of situation where there was a lot of insecurity in the group. There was a lot of criticizing. Yep. There was a lot of um, like talking about, like as soon as one girl left the room, like everyone else would talk about them. Right. And so that Bullying. sort of just, that yeah. was my life for five years as like, Uh, you know, early teens, I would just, I was very, um, insecure, very caught up in this like gossiping, um, criticizing thing. Mm -hmm. And that really like wore on my self-esteem. I never really stood up for myself. I just sort of like took it and took it and took it. But I also have this very natural sort of sense of like anger at injustice and that kind of built up inside of me. So finally, after like five years of that, I snapped, but it took me a long time and a lot of Um, just taking people like criticizing and putting you down um, to finally like stand up for myself. Like I remember it just got worse and worse. And there was a period where like I was 15 or 16. I remember like we were driving to a concert in in the car and like they were talking about, they made some super inappropriate joke about me being in love with like someone's dad or something. It was like, it was like really weird and just like, (laughs) just very like humiliating. Yeah. And they were like, oh, but you wouldn't do that because you're too Christian. Like, it was just like this yeah. very like, and I'm like, these are my friends. Yeah. Like, you know, quote, friends. Like, friends, yep. friend, like, but to me, that was all that I knew. Mm-hmm. And that was my only like close group of friends. So right. I feel like I really just became one of them rather than standing up for myself. So that they, was definitely negative. They probably didn't really seem to appreciate you too much or didn't. I mean. Or maybe they did in certain ways, but then there are other things that overpowered that. I would say, okay, so we have a song called Acid Rain that my sister Lauren wrote. And Mm -hmm. she really described this well. She was saying, this is how you know a relationship is toxic um, if you are kind of going back and forth. So like half the time it's really good, but the other half the time it's really bad. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't like they were always mean because if they were always mean to me, I think that would be pretty obvious. Like, oh, this is really bad. But they were really nice sometimes, but it was just like, then there were these moments of criticizing. So it was like, you didn't really know. I feel like I was just constantly like, oh, what am I going to wear? Because I don't want it to be like the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. What am I going to say? I don't want it to be the wrong thing. So it was like just this very um, conformist mentality of like, which is so not me. Mm-hmm. I'm very um, non-conformist. Yep, absolutely. So that just killed me for like years to just put myself in a box. But I was insecure. Right. So I didn't really yeah. know what else to do. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel like during that time, how did you meet your needs? essentially. Oh gosh. And I did you? No, I yeah. don't think I did. <laughs> and so what happened as a result? Oh man. I remember when I was 14, um, walking around my hometown and I just remember I was in like the town center area and I was looking out at this fountain. And I just remember that was like the first time I had ever really been aware of myself. Like I don't really, I mean, I have memories before that, but they were all kind of blurry and like not very clear. And I just remember thinking like, I feel dead inside. I feel, mm-hmm. I feel very numb. And I just remember thinking like, I feel like I'm kind of floating out of my body, like disassociated from myself. And that was like this very clear moment. Like, this is a weird, this is like, I don't think I'm supposed to, like, I feel like I'm always happy on the outside because people always, you know, want me to be, Mm -hmm. but like on the inside, I feel so numb and so dead that it was just like this very strange difference in contrast. So was that after the friend group? That was right in the middle of it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 
So you were like just on a walk by yourself. So it was kind of yeah. in that time when you actually got to be alone. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, I was never really needed. alone because I was right. always with my family mm-hmm. and we were all homeschooled. So yep. we were always together or I was like with that group of friends like or doing me. I was very, very active. Like I did musical theater. I did swim team. Like I just was anytime my mom was like, OK, who wants to try like this new activity? I'd be like me. I'll try really? it. So yeah. like I did every like tons right. of sports youth group. I was at church like four nights a week, like volunteering, doing different Whoa. things. So I was always very active. Yeah. And that was, I think that was sort of how I dealt with this, these painful feelings inside of like insecurity and sort of like rejection from my friends was just by filling up my life with things mm. so that I never really had the time. Like yeah. in that moment, that was one of the rare times I remember really like just not being having alone. anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now that you feel numb in this moment, mm-hmm. like what happened after that, I guess? Um, I think I just kind of noted that and I didn't really do much about it. I started, I think, so for me, um, music became a really big part of my life at that time. I was kind of like, I wanted to copy my older brother at first and be cool. Mm, So I kind of started listening to like rap and like punk. (laughs) Like, I don't know. My favorite band was The Clash Ah. and um, also like The Offspring. And like, I would just listen to like whatever my older brother listened to because I thought that was cool. And sort of like, I feel like the sort of anger and grit of that music it sort of helped it yep. just really subtly I didn't even know but like it helped me express this sort of like this sense of injustice that was building inside of me mm-hmm. and then when I became like kind of mid-teen like you know 15 16 17 I started getting into emo music yep. and that Best. became my outlet like yeah. dashboard confessional yep. like just these and like Mayday Parade just yep. like these really like gritty intense songs and then and then I just started getting into indie and I listened to like sad songs all the time so like without even knowing it music became this outlet that was sort of like just building and um and I would just listen to these songs obsessively Mm. all the time and like I always had music on in my room I feel like that sort of helped me with my anxiety I wasn't even aware of the anxiety because I didn't really know what it was Mm -hmm. but it was always there and so I make these playlists and I listen to them every single day and every night And also a big thing that happened was when I was um, 16, that was like this sort of awakening for me where I was having problems with all the friends Mm -hmm. and I actually stood up for myself for the Mm. first time. My older sister, Christina, encouraged me. She was like, Kath, you need to stand up for yourself. You need Mm -hmm. to be honest with how you're feeling. And I was like, what? How do I even do (laughs) that? I think for one of the girls, I wrote her a letter just kind of expressing what I was feeling and then. That was terrifying. I don't think it even fixed the problem, but like it felt so good. Like, and then for the other ones, like I remember it was, okay, so this is weird, but it was Halloween and they all wanted to be the Spice Girls for Halloween. And they were like, I didn't really want to do that. Like I, okay, that's the thing. So as a kid Mm -hmm. going to explain that, I loved making my own costumes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. You still do. Yeah. I I still like love the creativity. Like Mm -hmm. I would always just make my costumes by hand, like crafting and so that was like a big thing for me and so with this group of friends they always wanted to do a group costume and usually it was something like that just didn't really require a lot of creativity and so we were going to be the spice girls that year and i remember like we were in target and we were looking at and i it was like really close to halloween i didn't have a costume and i was kind of they wanted me to be posh spice because she Hmm. had brown hair okay and they were like i remember one of the girls pulled out like this like really this like nighty, like a very like inappropriate type. And she was like, she just looked at me and was like joking, like, Oh, Kath, you should wear this. Oh, like gosh. it was just making fun of the fact that I would never wear right. something like that. And then they all started laughing. And I remember that just, that just was it for me. I was like, mm. this is not okay. And yeah. I just like snapped. And I was like, I told them, I was like, I think a few days later, I was like, I'm going to do my own costume and you guys can do whatever you want, but I'm not like, I'm not going to be a spice girl. And they were so mad at me. And the leader of the group texted me. She's like, thanks for ruining Halloween. And I just started bawling. I I was babysitting at the time and I was like, Oh, I ruined Halloween. (laughs) But like, but I did something about it and they all made fun of me. And like, you know, like I remember hearing stuff that they had said about me and one of the other girls Mm. who had gone off on our own, but I just, I snapped. I was so done and I couldn't handle it anymore. And that just sent me off on this period of searching. And I just, Mm. for the first time in my life, I was just like, who am I? What, what am I beyond like all of these people? And it's not just that friend group. I feel like that was just really the surface of like, that was what brought me, like, I honestly feel like God brought that in my life. Like that was what pushed me over the edge of this lifelong pattern of just complying, complying, being what people wanted and just putting myself like last and never really asking like, is this actually good for me? Mm -hmm. And so I just went off on this journey and 
for this, I remember this summer, it was so pivotal for me. I just started searching. Who am I? Um, my biggest thing was books. Okay. My, yeah. so my aunt's an English teacher and I asked her for suggestions and I went, I was very snobby. I, I kind mm-hmm. of can be like an elitist about certain things, which is so, <laughs> so lame. It's but just certain things I'm pretty like, oh yeah, this is what it has to be. Yeah. Like, so I was like, it has to be like these well-respected books that yeah, have stood the test of time. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't, I was like, I can't read like these modern books because these are fluff. Uh, so I was like 16 years old, but I was like, I got to read the classics. So yeah. I just went down um, to the library and I started getting all of these classic books. And I remember like reading like Catcher in the Rye and like Joy Luck Club, like these books that were, they were just lots of different cultures, lots of, oh, the the chosen that was another one about like jewish culture and like i just started immersing myself in these different worlds and kind of thinking about life a lot more philosophically Hmm. and i just started realizing like there's so much more to this life than my little problems Mm -hmm. and it sort of brought me out of myself and for the and i feel like that sort of helped me so the books the books were the big thing and it was also like writing i started writing poetry um all the time and i was that was something i loved since childhood but i'd sort of put it away when i was in that group because we were always like shopping or you know watching reality tv or reading you know magazines and just like hanging out and getting ice cream like everything was just very like shallow teenage Mm -hmm. you know that's what teenagers do but i was always this very like deep old soul so that didn't really match my personality but i loved people Mm -hmm. so sort of like this you know this conflict yeah yeah so it was the writing it was the reading and it was also i started skateboarding and i started playing the bass yeah and so i would just skateboard all the time in my neighborhood i just started i started to feel like you know i feel like for the first time i started to gain this sense of self-worth like yeah I'm a cool person. Like I felt yeah. like I, d- I never really felt pretty or like, I didn't yeah. really like, I didn't right. think I was good looking at all, but mm-hmm. I was like, I have a cool personality. And when I read those books, I was like, and I have something to say, Yeah, like I have an opinion right. and I just started to become this much more strong willed, like stubborn person that mm-hmm. I feel like had always been inside of me, but was crushed. So mm-hmm. that was a very long answer, but yeah, no, that's sort of the, the middle era that I can remember. The more information, the better. Um, so yeah. Okay, so you're like 16 at this point? When yeah, you, like, 16, 17, kind of broke that was off. when it started, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess, so that was like, what, almost 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so kind of, I guess, talk about your journey then after mm-hmm. you told them off, which you just kind of did. You're like talking about how you really started becoming your own person. Mm-hmm. But this has still been a struggle for you. And yeah. I think maybe always will. Like, I think there's sometimes... Like, it seems like there's one thing that we always kind of struggle with throughout yes. our entire lives. And we're Everyone always... has that thing. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. So how now, I guess, in the last, like, 10 years, how has this kept popping up in your life? Like, in the band, mm-hmm. in relationships, and friendships, whatever. Yeah. Like, how does that keep popping up for totally. you? And how do you... I guess, how do you overcome it, too? Yeah, definitely. So I feel like for me, um, I have... So I have like, I put a lot of pressure on myself in different ways. I'm very perfectionistic in my own way. It's not like my older sister where like she achieves all of these Mm -hmm. things and like she's very like career focused. Whereas like for me, I'm much more idealistic. So I have these ideals for everything that I do. And one, yeah, we, we've talked about this and we relate. (laughs) So like everything I do, like, like, you know, for a boyfriend or for a friend or for how I should behave, Mm -hmm. I have these very high standards that I'm always placing. So I feel like even though I did have this sort of awakening in my teenage years, that was just the first of like many sort of like struggles and things that I needed to learn along the way. Mm. And I'm still like really, you know, struggling with this problem of like resting and feeling good enough and also like not doing too many things um, in my schedule. So next after shortly after that whole period, I ended up moving down to Southern California where my sisters and I were pursuing our music career. We had a record deal and we were doing a lot of like career things. And so I just remember in, in Malibu, it was a very isolated place. And that was sort of this period of my life where I went into, um, the sort of like, I feel like it was my second like wave of yeah that. of like teenage okay. young adult life yep and I just became very very involved in my church and that was mm. sort of like that was a blessing and a curse um because that church was really my saving grace mm-hmm. I was so so lonely in Malibu and so isolated and I found this church community that I felt like I was appreciated I was seen they didn't really have much help so they saw me as this young oh, adult who okay. came in and was like, hey, what can I help with? Yeah. And they were like, help with everything. So of like, course. you know, and of course that's, it's my fault too. Cause I don't really think I knew much about boundaries, right. but I just like, 
So I just took on every role and I was like, I was in like, I think three or four different ministries of like just different things. So I'd be at that church once again, just like my teenage years, like, you know, three to four nights a week doing Mm. different like ministries and helping out. And it was fun, but it was exhausting. And Mm. beyond that, I just filled myself up with every activity I could possibly do. Like anytime a friend asked me for anything or, or to do anything with them, I would always say yes, without even really thinking, you know, if I, if I was free that night, yeah, Yeah. exactly. And the concept of having free time or rest time just never really occurred to me. Like, Hmm. I mean, I had that sometimes, but it was more of like an accident. It wasn't like I ever planned that or like downtime. That just was not a concept. So I just remember for years in Malibu, I filled my schedule as much as I could. And I ended up, um, just having like this constant sense of like burnout Mm. where I was like waking up, um, early going to bed late, waking up early, going to bed late, Mm, doing things from morning until night and just like filling up my days and like to the brim. Mm -hmm. And once again, I think this was really a way for me to deal with anxiety, which I still haven't really mastered how to deal with Mm -hmm. that, (laughs) but I just wasn't really aware of it. And so I just started pushing things. And then, Um, I started actually going to therapy when I was 20, so six years ago, because I knew that my anxiety was kind of like getting into a bad place. Yeah. And I also was like studying psychology. Mm. So I started realizing like, what does it look like to be a healthy person? Yeah. And I felt like I was missing all these things. So that was something that helped me a lot. But I feel like that second chapter in Malibu was just like, I was doing a lot of good things, but I was so tired. And when I look at pictures mm. of myself from that time, I feel like I always have like dark circles under my huh. eyes. Cause I was just like pushing myself yeah. and it was so hard. Cause like my work life, you know, there were periods where it was very busy mm-hmm. and then I would keep going at full speed with like my personal Gosh, life yeah. and just like volunteering and everything. And I just never really knew how to say no or put my foot down. So mm. that was sort of like the second period okay. of all of it. Yeah. And yeah. so what were, I guess the practices and maybe, yeah, I mean, really just practices that you did after realizing that, you know, you were starting to fill your time up like way too much. So what were like, what were some things you started doing that really helped you to, I guess, slow down and simplify? Yeah. Well, I didn't really do that at all in Malibu. (laughs) So it's been a lot more I feel like I was just very, yeah, it's definitely been after that period, just in the last couple of years. But Mm -hmm. one thing that I did pretty religiously, and I feel like this was my way of resting, was going on walks at the ocean every day Mm. because I lived a mile from the beach. So pretty much every single day I would go down to the beach and walk. And like that was such a restful like time. Mm -hmm. And I would I would listen to music and really contemplate, you know, my life and write a lot of poems. So you did have something at least. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I definitely had, you know, sometimes when I was chilling, but that wasn't really very common. (laughs) So I feel Mm -hmm. like it's been a much more recent thing that I've kind of tried I don't I don't even I'm trying to even think of when was the first yeah like what sparked that I mean did it did it take like some not heartbreak necessarily but it did it take some like very exhausting situation for you to finally be like I mean because that already happened to be like again so there was a period in I think it was end of 2013 maybe where I was sick for from September through February Mm. And I just couldn't really get well. Like I, I always had a cold Mm. or I got like these really intense flus. Like I just kept getting sick and I never really felt better. And I remember went to the doctor because I'd been sick for, that was when I'd been sick for a month. And I was just like, I don't know if there's something wrong with Mm -hmm. me, but I never have a cold or flu for this long. And they were like, oh, you're fine. They tested me for stuff. And they were like, yeah, just gargle salt water or something. I don't even know. (laughs) But it was just like. rest probably. Yeah. Yeah. Which I didn't really think of the whole resting thing. So I think. I remember in December, I finally allowed myself to rest. And that was when I started Mm. to get better. But then I fell right back off the wagon with Christmas and all the activities. And then I just got sick again and Mm -hmm. couldn't really get well. That really should have been a wake up call, honestly. But I really think in the last couple of years, um, what sort of struck me was um, on so actually 2016. So two years ago, really, it hasn't really been that long. Mm. I went on a walk and I can share this with you. This was actually... Um, I like to write when I'm walking yeah. a lot, just on my phone, mm-hmm. like poems or reflections. So I had this reflection um, in 2016 on Christmas Day, mm-hmm. and I was on a walk, and I just wrote down this whole thing about. Oh, I'll just read it to you. Okay. Yeah. So I'm coming off 2016 feeling reflective, grateful, but also a little tired. 
One of the greatest struggles of my young adult life has been finding balance. I tend to overbook and overcommit to the point of exhaustion and sometimes illness. When I moved to Nashville, I felt like God was giving me a major chance to have a fresh start. A new city with no commitments, no friends, and no obligations. At first, the days felt strange and eerily quiet. I had time to do things like go on walks, sit on the carpet in my room for hours, and think. Hmm. I read and wrote more than I did in a while. I was terrified and lonely when I first moved to Nashville, but also really? excited huh. because I didn't have any friends. True, you guys didn't know anybody. Yeah, mm. I was deeply grateful for the newness of the blank page before me. It was essential, and while it was hard and scary, I needed it. Over these last two years, it seems I have begun slipping. So this is sort of like the third wave was like okay. Nashville yeah. when I sort of slipped back into like bad habits. Mm -hmm. um, early mornings, staying up too late. Too much coffee, rushing, pushing the gas pedal because I'm running late again. Calendar mm. pages blurred with coffee dates, weddings, volunteering, events, and commitments. Looking back, it was all good things that stemmed from good desires and healthy intentions. Or sorry, good intentions and healthy desires. Because I don't know if that's really... I don't know, healthy intentions, but yeah. my desires are and always have been in no particular order. Number one, to have a, a vibrant, rich social life. Number mm. two, to have true, healthy friendships. Number three, to give my time and talents to the community by helping out with the causes and ministries that I feel called to. Number four, to enrich my spiritual life and grow closer to God daily. Number five, to love my family well and be there for them. Number six, to be healthy and take care of my body. Number seven, to grow constantly, have adventures and experience new things. Well, priorities. It's a lot Take of priorities. A lot, a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. As I said, I believe these are all good, but yeah. reading oh, through yeah. this list and thinking of back on my year, I feel like I've fallen short. Mm. Not because I didn't push myself to give every ounce of my time and energy to these goals because I did. What I've learned at 24 is that when you do too much, everything starts to blur together and you become numb. It's like you turn up the volume on your life so much that you become deaf and you can't even hear the music anymore. Mm. And then I said, I stopped hearing the music on our European tour. Um, it was one of those classic Catherine weekends, traveling out of state to a wedding, shopping and packing and rehearsing for tour, while also editing a book and managing our album release campaign. Yeah, I became wow. so numb and tired that I could barely think. I remember being at the wedding and all I felt was sadness. I was so overworked, overwhelmed and stressed. I kept telling myself I could do it all, but the reality was that I couldn't. I was crashing and burning. There have been many nights the last few months where I stayed up late and I felt an immense shame that my life had become out of control. I would be in church apologizing to God. I'm sorry that I really can't focus on you right now. Just let me get some, sl some sleep and I promise I will be better. Mm. When you are underslept and overwhelmed, it's easier to spend way too much money to eat junk food, to stop working out. And worst of all, to struggle. This is the part that really is like I wanted to share, but to struggle to be present to the family and friends that are mm. right in front of you. Yeah. I noticed many times these past few months that a family fr family member or friend would be talking to me and I would start zoning out. A voice inside of me would bark, concentrate. And I would pray for God to help me to focus and be present, even though all I wanted to do was be in my bed with my eyes closed and nothing to focus on. So. Interesting. I kind of feel like that's like me right now. Honestly. Really? Yeah, because I, uh. I keep noticing myself saying concentrate, concentrate in the back mm. of my mind. Because I just think my mind's all over the place lately. Mm -hmm. And I've got, you know, different things. And well, I, I texted Christina today and was like, Oh, I'm not really feeling super excited for the podcast today because mm. I was just like, I well, I, I just can't concentrate lately. For mm. some reason, like I, I've been struggling you with feel that. like you've been overworking. Yeah, exactly. And I told her, I was like, I just, I want one of those days where I can literally just sit around and do nothing. Yes. But that's not coming so in the good. future. So oh. <laughs> hopefully this next week with 4th of yeah. July. But it's always like these elusive, like. Oh, I'm really tired, but yes. like I know sometime in the future I'll have this day. And you just think about yourself like doing nothing and it just sounds yep. delicious. Yeah. You're like it does. You don't have any of those coming up. Right. And I mean, you know, it's nice to not have that, but yeah. Like every now and then a person just needs to rest, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah. Regularly. But it is but it is, yeah, that's the thing. It it needs to be more of a regular everyday thing. Yes. Small doses yeah. than it does like one day where you just veg out. Yeah. Because I think I feel like that's what society tells us is, is it's like work hard, work hard, work hard, mm -hmm. and then rest one day, whatever, or mm -hmm. rest, rest over Christmas break or whatever that looks yeah. like. And rather than incorporating it more regularly into your everyday life. Yeah. Yes. And mm -hmm. I think that's like the really hard part with a lot of people is they don't mm -hmm. really understand that. Mm -hmm. And they just think like, Make the most out of every single day. Put the most into every single day. Live life to the fullest. Yeah. No regrets. Exactly. That's like exactly. the quote of our generation. Yeah, it is. It's like live life to the fullest, but like what does that really mean? Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. But I feel like for you, 
I mean, obviously, I, I guess I've known you for like, what, two or three years now? And I feel yeah. like you are at least right now in a better place because yeah. even though you still have like a hectic schedule and always will, you've yeah. simplified a lot I in your have, life. So talk yeah. about like simplifying and, yeah. and minimalism and all that kind of yeah. stuff and how that's like really helping yeah. you in the process. That's been, that's like my theme this year was yeah. I want, we, I think we both like pick a word yep. for the year. Mm -hmm. And last year my word was rest and that was just a, a fail. <laughs> I mean, yeah. actually for about six months of the year, I kind of was like a little bit better okay. and then I just fell off. And then mm -hmm. for the next six months I was just bad. Yeah. But I feel like it's like my addiction is like being busy. Yep. I mean like in a, such a bad way of just like avoiding things by mm -hmm. being busy. But yep. This year, my word was much more like intentional. I feel like because rest, I feel like it's super broad. It is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like it's a it's a good thing, but it just mm -hmm. didn't work for me. But this year, my word was simplify. So I just wanted to kind of pare down. Honestly, a big part of this, I think, is my boyfriend, Max. Mm. He is an introvert and he definitely like naturally takes life at like a more relaxed yep. pace. And like that's just so different than me. Like I move so quickly just because I'm usually late and I usually have way too yep. many things to do. So I'm just like multitasking, you know, when right. I cook, I'm just throwing everything everywhere. Like, I mean, it's just yep. like, I'm very messy yep. person. I'm not like neat. And he's just very concentrated and slow. Mm. And he gives himself so much time for every task, which is like, it's amazing that he naturally has more of that balanced way of living. Yep. And as we've gotten closer, cause we've been dating for just about um, coming up on nine months. Um, I feel like I've sort of, synced up a little bit closer to his rhythm, mm. which has been so awesome. So I think for the first time, because I have this person in my life that I care about so much, yeah. every single week I'm looking at my schedule saying, okay, what nights am I going to see Max? Mm. And that's like my first, you know, when I'm planning. Yeah. And so for the first time, it's like, oh, you needed another person to actually slow down, which is kind of sad, but yeah. it's like, but I want, I want to be able to see him. So like, right. I think having him has really helped me to, um, to like calm down my mm -hmm. pace a little bit and just focus on what's in the moment. But this year I really wanted to simplify. So I've been trying to, um, just, I don't know. I feel like I'm still sort of getting the mindset, right? Yeah. We're in June. So we're like halfway through, mm -hmm. but I started watching some documentaries on minimalism okay. and just like watching YouTube videos and budgeting and just sort of like th this idea of living, um, a greater life with less stuff. Mm, yep. And I feel like having less stuff gives you like more energy because the more stuff you have, the more you have to manage it. You have to clean it. You have to organize yep. it. Like just in every way, it's just, it bogs you down. So I'm trying to get rid of my stuff, mm. not only like clothes and, you know, belongings, but also, um, relationships that I know it sounds kind of sad, but like I've realized that, and this is actually something I learned from my favorite author, Shauna Nequist. Ooh, mm, shout yep. out to Shauna. Mm -hmm. She's the best. <laughs> love her. I've read How all of her times? books like five times. Yeah. I love her. <laughs> but her book, Present Over Perfect, yep. that was something that I'd kind of already been thinking about just because, I don't know, it's just sort of been on my mind a lot. But she had this has this amazing book called Present Over Perfect, and she really talks about what it means to like pare down and have a simpler life. And I, I really need to reread that one again, but I've read it like three times mm -hmm. now. But she talks about your home team and how your home team is like your closest circle of family and friends. Okay. And she was saying like, you need to really be focusing on taking care of your home team. And if you're going to this outer circle of people that are kind of more like acquaintances and not that you should never make new friends. Right, or like, of course. Obviously, you know, there's balance and everything. You but like a core. But if you're mm. constantly like just available to any acquaintance and any friend at any time, you're probably going to be neglecting your home team. Yep. So I've been trying really hard to do that like focus more of my energy on less people. And honestly, my boyfriend's mm. been a big part of that. Yep. Like, because that really, and, and even just seeing that like nine months of pouring my heart into one, one person, person yeah. and not, I haven't been neglecting my other friendships right. in any sense. Like I've still been keeping them mm -hmm. you know, healthy, but really that's just shown me how like, it's so cool when you dedicate energy specifically to one person or mm. one thing and how that just is so deep and so life-giving yeah. rather than having coffee with all these people that you only see every couple months. And that's kind yeah. of what I used to do is like, I was just so busy. I would just say yes to all these people. And I love people. I fall in love with people so much. Mm -hmm. And like to this day, there's so many, so many, there's still so many girls in Nashville, especially in California, yeah. but cause I live in Nashville right. that I just absolutely love. And I want to go to coffee with mm -hmm. all the time. But if I were to see all of them, yeah. I would only be seeing people like once every three months. Right. And that's just not a deep relationship with anyone. Yep. So I'm trying to pour more into less people. So I sat down and I made a list of friends that I thought would be a good idea to just 
core more in Europe, mm. of course, one of them. Yep, and right. we, I feel like we've been good. Like we yeah. have life talks pretty regularly. Well, and, and like, you're really good about making time still for yeah. other people. Cause like, you know, and you guys have only been dating for nine months. Like right, right. you're kind of still in a honeymoon phase. Yeah, like, probably. Exactly. So yeah. it's kind of wild that you can still make time for other people yeah. during that. Definitely. During that season. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But I think the even deeper thing about this new season is um, worth. Mm. And I feel like, cause you know, you could say, Oh, I'm so busy. I have bad time management. Yep. Like, you know, I'm, I'm always running late. I need to, you know, plan better. Yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. But that is the surface. What is yep. the deeper issue for you? So for me, it was really this sense of self-worth and feeling like if I didn't give my all 110% to every person that asked me, mm-hmm. then I would feel lonely or left out or mm. ignored or dismissed. Like, it was just this constant, like, I need to keep proving myself. I yeah. need to keep, I need to always be there. So people will keep inviting me. I didn't want to miss out. Excuse me. I didn't want to, um, to just be this like background person. So huh. I think that was why I just pushed myself to always be there for people yeah. rather than like, but sometimes you have to be there. So that's what I've, I'm really trying to get to the core of the issue, which is like loving myself and giving myself grace mm. to rest because yep. to give yourself rest is like, it's hard. I don't know. It's like you have to really love yourself to really give yourself do. time. Yeah. To like, so that's something else I'm trying. Like, first it was like, okay, I'm dating this guy. Like, I need to, mm-hmm. you know, make time for him. But then it was like, I need to make time for myself. Mm-hmm. And like, so now I'm trying to do that every single week. I'll plan like a night for like self care. Yeah. And I'll try to keep some time on the weekends free for self care mm-hmm. and just like really give much more of a priority to doing things like you know having time for myself which I yeah. still struggle with this every single week yep. and even in the self-care times a lot of times it ends up just becoming like right. cleaning or you Same. know something that's mm-hmm. not really that relaxing but I am trying mm-hmm. and I'm like trying to get better <laughs> yeah so the worth thing like what would you say you're kind of telling yourself now that you that allows you to to rest to actually rest like yeah. do you is there something maybe like an affirmation that you say to yourself mm. like I am worthy of this or yeah, I actually have, um, I think my therapist gave this to me. I can't remember, but I had this little thing that I wrote on a sticky note and then it fell off my mirror. (laughs) But my friend, (laughs) my awesome friend, Sarah, that we both know Mm -hmm. she, Sarah for gone. She painted me something and I have it in my room still. And I look at it all the time. Well, actually there's two things, but, um, it's just the simple phrase. I am enough. Oh yeah. And Mm -hmm. that's sort of like what I meditate on is just being enough as I am Mm -hmm. without having to push or Mm -hmm. yeah. Or like just please people or be what people need me to be. That's Mm -hmm. like a huge one. And then the other one, which is actually Bible quote is be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. And that I have that actually in two different places in my room. Yep. And that one, I just look at all the time and just think like, sometimes it's like, I'm afraid of people getting hurt and I want to be the savior. That's another big part of this Mm -hmm. whole problem. So just knowing that I am not God, God mm-hmm. is God, and I'm yep. just a servant, mm-hmm. that helps me realize like, okay, Kath, you are not the answer to everyone's problems. Right. You can't just be there for everyone. And even if you were, you're not going to solve their problems. Mm-hmm. Like that's not your job. Your job is to be a servant and being a servant requires resting. Yeah. Like to be a good servant, you have to like be able to take your time mm-hmm. to rest. So yeah. trying to balance that is like really important for me. And I think that's so refreshing too, to know I can be still. Mm -hmm. before I go out into the world and serve and like definitely to know that you can be really at peace with who you are and Mm -hmm. and to just rest I mean yeah I don't know it's like I think it's so refreshing to know that you really can just rest before whatever Mm -hmm. you have to do yeah Mm -hmm. definitely and it's obviously something that so many people struggle with and like don't even realize they're struggling with because they don't take the time to think about it. Because you think, oh, I just have a busy full life. Yeah. It seems like a good thing on the surface. Yeah. Yeah. And it is fun. Like you do a lot of fun things, but like I was kind of saying in that journal entry, when you get to this certain point where you're doing so many things, it's like, you're just, you to become numb and it's just hard to like, it's like you can't enjoy everything Mm -hmm. because the music is so loud and the colors are so loud and like everything is just full volume Mm -hmm. that you're like, "Ah." Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, yeah. okay. So now that you're really like simplifying and just in a much better place with resting and knowing your worth. Yes. Who would you say Catherine Simrelli is today right now? Ooh, that's a good one. Man, I'm a work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that. Aren't we all? I'm trying to embrace all the parts of myself. Like I was reading something recently that was saying like that every woman has this like 
you know, angry, moody side. Mm, and so true. I know. And it's like, and I think every person, yeah. you know, it's like, it, it's across the board, but yeah. this was specifically for women. Okay. And I was like, that is so true. And I feel like, and they were saying like how every person disowns parts of themselves. I felt like for me, the biggest part of myself that I disowned was this part that was like ever angry or upset. Like mm-hmm. I felt like if I felt those two things, I couldn't show them because that was not allowed. Okay. Like I only can be happy and like, you know, mm-hmm. people pleasing all the yeah. time. So I've been recently trying to be, I know it sounds bad, but like embrace my anger yeah. or embrace my upsetness. Like mm-hmm. I just realized that that's human. Like no person is going to be perfectly happy all the time right. or perfectly nice, you know? Mm-hmm. And if you are perfectly quote nice all the time, you're probably going to be very passive aggressive. Yep. It's just because it's not like people are people and even the most loving person could mistreat you at some yeah. point or say something that offends you. Like that's just human nature. Mm-hmm. And especially for me as a very sensitive person, like I tend to take things personally anyway. So I have to allow myself to just say things. So I feel like in this season of my life, who I am now, I'm still very empathetic and um, yep. compassionate and I care deeply about people. And I want, like I, in my mind, I will never let go of this ideal that like, yeah. I want to be the friend that is always there for someone and that answers that call. Like I Mm -hmm. always want to be there, but I realize that I can't necessarily do that. So I have for everybody, at least not for everyone all the time. Mm -hmm. You can be that at certain times for people. And like, I don't know, that's still something that I, you know, strive for, but I feel like I'm just accepting that I am just one person. I'm not, can't be everywhere at all times. And I'm, I'm trying to embrace those parts of myself that maybe are, angry sometimes if there's an injustice or Mm. if I feel like someone mistreated me and being honest and saying that to their face, that's something that I've actually really enjoyed doing the last few Mm. years is just confronting people in a nice way. I am, I tend to be very diplomatic just naturally. Like I don't want to hurt someone or make them feel bad. If anything, I only would um, confront someone when I really truly feel like I can come to a place of peace with them Mm. and we can like, this will make us grow closer. So I'm trying to just be the Catherine that is, fully herself and just a human, a human who is angry sometimes, a human that gets upset and a human that speaks up against injustice or Mm. against somebody, you know, mistreating you. Like I'm trying to be my full, you know, in all of my brokenness and all of my, my flaws and me being too sensitive, whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. all that stuff. I'm trying to embrace all of that. Mm. Well, it's awesome too. Cause I think Everyone that I've met, when they meet you the first time, they're just like, you can tell she's just the most like genuine, empathetic person and mm-hmm. like just so warm because that's Thank your you, personality yeah. is very warm. And I think it's awesome, though, that you're kind of allowing yourself now to be genuine to yourself, if yeah, that makes sense. Right. Because right. Yeah. now you're I mean, now you're allowing yourself to experience your full self and you weren't doing that before. And you probably would lash out on people like unexpectedly because people probably wouldn't expect that from you but now maybe it's going to be a little more expected because you're being yeah. your full person well, I feel like if you lash out at someone and it's super over the top it's usually because it's been building up yes, for a long time exactly. and I'm realizing if you just say things in the moment before yep. they've gone way too far mm-hmm. then usually it's just pretty you know it might be a little angry but or it's awkward, not it's just it's more like, of just like hey did you mean that or like that really hurt my feelings. You know, like that's a simple statement that will usually it's building a bridge. That's yeah. what, your goal is to build a bridge and get over it, you know, honestly, True. <laughs> but not just like let all this stuff fill up under yeah. the bridge and then it's just flooding everywhere. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. No, I, I commend you for that. Cause Thanks. that's hard. Like it is really hard, yeah, but it's but so worth it. So being worth it. honest. Mm-hmm. It's like, so, and that's something I'm really trying to practice with my boyfriend too. Like just telling him anytime In something is, a little bit off to me, even if I feel silly or stupid or like I'm being dramatic, it's like, you're going to thank yourself for not letting that build up yeah. because that's, I've actually heard that too. Like in relationships, the ones that end up falling apart are generally the ones where they never argue or fight, mm, yep. not in a disrespectful way, but right. just like, if you never share what's bothering you, you're never you going to know. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to build up over time and then it's just going to explode. Yeah. And I have I'd, to explode as humans. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, I mean, I think we're about done. Uh, Well, what is one Bible verse quote, which you kind of already have shared, I think. Yeah. What is one Bible Bible verse quote, or even maybe like a story that you've heard from somebody else where you're like, wow, this is me. I relate Mm -hmm. to this so well, specifically for the rest stuff. Mm Because 
I mean, I think I kind of know who you would talk about or the verse you would talk about if you would. Yeah. Man, a story. Um, I'm trying to think. Could be a book. Yeah. Well, honestly, Shauna's book, Present yeah, Over exactly. Perfect. <laughs> that's like the book that right. I highly recommend to everyone. Mm. Present Over Perfect. So good. And such an amazing, like, just the message that I really needed to hear, like more of like building this new mindset of rest and building this mm. mindset of saying no yep. and putting yourself first sometimes, even if you let people down. That's something I've learned too is like, when you start to set boundaries for yourself that make you a healthier person yeah. with more of like downtime and stuff, some people are not going to be okay with that. Mm. And certain people are going to be angry that you're no longer giving what you were before. Right. And you have to be okay with disappointing people, which is so hard. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. you have to just prepare yourself that yep. if you're going to get on this new journey of resting sometimes, like you're going to let people down and that is okay. You're not, you can't be everything for everyone. Mm -hmm. And if you try to be everything for everyone, you're going to be nothing to no one. Like mm -hmm. you're not going to be a significant person. In anyone's life. Yep. You're just going to be this little glimmer. So I would say really Shauna's story inspired me these last few years to just sort of take a second look at myself and mm -hmm. just the life that she describes. I mean, from day one with all of her books, she's so incredible. And she, she just describes the kind of life that I really want to have. Like, mm -hmm. I want to be a writer. I mean, I am a writer, but I want to publish books yep. and I want to be a mom and I want to have kids. And she does all those things. And I feel like, I mean, I don't know her, but like based on her stories, she does those things so beautifully. Like mm. she's, she totally focuses on community and hosp hospitality, which is yeah. something that I feel really called to. Like, I love setting a table for people and having people over for food. And that's just sort of the dream life. Like also, I'm definitely living a lot more of a low key life now than I used mm. to be. Like I, when I lived in LA, I would be going to concerts all the time, driving yeah. an hour to get out there in the LA yeah. traffic and, and going to the concert and then driving a back energy. and yep. a lot of energy mm -hmm. and a lot of just go, go, go. Nowadays, just for the last few years, I've just really enjoyed being in either my home or someone else's home mm. and just like sharing a meal together yeah. or a cup of tea or, you know, sitting in a coffee shop, even the coffee shops that are too loud. I try to avoid, I don't huh. really go out in crowds That's a lot. A I feel like I'm just kind of healing from how my life has been in the previous years. I'm sort of like reacting to it and having this quieter, simpler life where I don't necessarily accept every social invitation mm -hmm. or, and not that, Oh, I'm too good or anything. It's just right. that I, I do know that I get overstimulated. Yep. So I'm trying to craft this new life that is simpler and quieter, but has a deeper sense of like richness to it. And that's what I'm going for. So I would say Shauna is kind of the story and, yeah. and really inspired by her, but sort of making that my own and mm -hmm. taking it to the next level. Yeah. And I guess too, like for the Bible verse that you were mentioning, it was yeah. probably be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know yeah. that I'm God. And I also mm -hmm. have another one that I found recently that I absolutely love. And then I, um, I drew a little picture of it and hung it up in my, huh in my room that I thought was cool. Um, this is from Isaiah 43, 19. And it says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Mm. And I just think about that. Like, I feel like I was really in the wilderness yeah. of like busyness, just being this like sort of chaotic survival mentality yeah. and making a way, just thinking of like this, this clear path that I'm following mm. and then streams in the, in the wasteland. Um, it's just sort of like you were, you know, thirsting and thirsting for something refreshing for so long. Yeah. And now you're finally getting a chance to just sit and like enjoy that nourishment. Mm. So that's sort of like the that. image of God. God is doing that for me. Yeah. And he's, and I'm constantly asking him, you know, please help me. I'm, mm -hmm. I did it again. I overbooked. Can you help me find rest? Yeah. And then it's weird. Like three things get canceled. I'm like, oh, cool. Thanks yeah. God. That yeah, was really, that, that was really clear. Happened. Yeah. <laughs> so it's nice how things just sort of, when you ask God for help, it, he really does mm. go above and beyond to meet your needs in all circumstances. So mm -hmm. that's a big, big quote for me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, to wrap up, I just want to say like, I really acknowledge you for always sharing your process and, mm -hmm. and being in the middle of it. And, and also knowing that it may, it might be something you struggle with the rest of your life, but yeah, right. if you can kind of overcome it every day and win mm -hmm. the day, yeah, it's like, right. it's so important and mm -hmm. you can end up having overall power over it. Mm -hmm. So yep. yeah, like I just want to acknowledge you for that and and thank you for coming on thank and you for having sharing me, your story about rest and yeah. worthiness. And, you know, yeah, it's something that everybody so struggles with. I'm sure. At I least. know. Yeah. If anyone that is recognizing. listening and they struggle, like you can definitely message me and mm -hmm. talk about tips and stuff. I always reply to my Instagram messages as much as I so can. Where so where can people find you on socials? Yeah. Well, mainly, I mean, I'm on Twitter's Kath Sim and Instagram is Catherine Cimarelli. 
Um, those are honestly the main ones that I check. Cool. <laughs> so just go okay. on those and our Patreon. I mean, I'm really active on our Patreon too. So cool. patreon.com slash Sumarelli. Sick. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank well, you thank so you much again. for having me. Thank Kira. you so much fun. I really Appreciate enjoyed it. You. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more content like this, you can subscribe to us on YouTube at the link in the description and also check out their Patreon page, patreon.com slash what's your life journey for exclusive inspirational content, which you can find that in the description too. See ya. Bye. Bye.